What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. If you guys are wondering, I'm in the hotel gym. If you guys are wondering why I'm in the hotel gym, it's because there's really not too many areas to film. I'm sorry if this is pretty loud. Maybe if, hold on, maybe I can turn this off. I'll turn it right back on. Yeah, I can turn this off. Hopefully the hotel don't sue me up. I'll turn it off. Yeah, that's perfect. I just don't want the sound to be crazy. So if you guys are wondering why I'm actually in the hotel gym, because there is nowhere to actually film that's uh, decent. Outside is so loud. We're like in the middle of the city. It's just super bad. So for today's video, guys, it is super late at night. Um, it's actually late when I'm filming this. You guys are watching this literally an hour after I filmed this. So I would like to uh, say thank you guys for clicking on this video, you know, right when I upload this thing. And uh, if you guys are watching it tomorrow, this is just a little update video on what went down today on day number one of FLW College Fishing National Championship on the Red River in Louisiana. So um, today honestly went fairly well. I'm not gonna say it went good, um, it did because it didn't go amazing, but it wasn't bad. You know, it was, it was a moderate day and it was a little less than I was expecting. You know, I really wanted the eight to 10 pound range I have not made a video on the Red River yet where we're actually fishing. It's a super tough fishery. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is the toughest lake I've ever fished um, for many of reasons. I'm going to make a video on the Red River, like talking about it because there's a lot. And then the reason why the fish are so small, the reason why they're so hard to catch, the reason why there's just not as many bass and it's just hard to get them to bite in general. Um, I'm going to make a video over that and explain myself because guys, this place is rough. It's a really rough um, fishery. So. Pretty much, I have some crazy stories for today um, that I can tell you guys. So, if you guys are wondering, um, we had about seven pounds today. And guess what? That, with four fish, we could not complete, we did not get our fifth fish. It's, we worked our butts off for that. We had like a limit, we didn't have a limit. We had four fish by like 10 o'clock. It was like 9.45, we had four fish and just could not execute on one more fish the rest of the day. And didn't really miss any fish. You know, we fished fairly clean, um, caught a lot of drum, <laughs> and they really tricked us. You know, I really thought we had a big bass on most of the time, but we uh, we, we executed on all the opportunities we had. Um, I believe Sean lost a fish, but I believe it was a drum. I don't think it was a bass. Um, I don't know if I lost any fish. I did catch a lot of drum, though. Sean caught a lot of drum. And I'm going to be posting updates because I have another video coming out Friday. It's probably going to be over the um, day two update. So I just want to talk about what went down today. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to spill all the information on what we're doing just because this is the middle of the tournament. I am uploading this the day that this took place um, because day two is tomorrow and we have to bust a big bag tomorrow. So how this works is day one was today. Day two is tomorrow and day three is Friday. The only way you can fish day three is if you're in top ten. So... We are three and a half pounds out of top 10. So it's not like it's a far, like we're far from that. Um, 14 pounds is leading. And then I believe it drops to 13. And then there's like a 12 pound bag. And uh, we're just a few pounds out of top 10. Like it can happen, but we have to get those big bites. That's, that is literally the only thing. We have to get those big bites and we can't, you know, miss any fish. We can't miss any opportunities. We're gonna have to grind it out. We're gonna have to make it happen. We're gonna have to put those fish in the boat. And we have to have five tomorrow. Like we have to have five, unless we just catch a mega bag. Unless we catch all five pounders, we're, we're gonna have to put them all in the boat. Like we can't play no games. And we really need to shoot for, I'd say a minimal 10 pounds. I don't even know if that's, that will probably not get us in the top 10. Um, who knows, it might. Um, I'd say 11, 11 and a half would probably get us in top 10 if people choke. But I can't judge that, you know, tomorrow's a whole new day. Um, you know, I don't know if these people are gonna be consistent. I don't even know if we're gonna be consistent. So it's, it's one of those deals and this lake is just so rough. So I believe, you know, ideally minimal, I would love to get 10 pounds, which is honestly a really good bag on this lake. I know that sounds crazy, but that is a very good bag on this lake. Um, 12 pounds would be amazing. And I would really like 14 pounds, which is what's leading today. So that's really shooting high. But I totally believe it's possible. It's just about finding those big fish. Um, and we have yet to catch a fish over two and a half pounds or two and three quarters here. So that's that's the only um, hard part. I have lost a fish that's about three pounds in practice, but uh, or two it's probably like two and a half, but two and three quarters. But rather than that, I haven't really seen any big fish. I haven't seen like any fours, any like three and a halves, any of that. 
But we're gonna we're gonna grind out tomorrow, guys. This key story I do want to talk about today because it's pretty interesting. I'm just gonna say this: we're locking in um, to another pool on the river, which I'm gonna explain in more videos about the Red River. Um, so we're locking um, through the dam into another side of the river. If you guys don't know what that that means, I know it's gonna probably be confusing for a lot of you guys. We well, have the dam, and then you lock through. So what the lock is is you pull your boat in. It has a door on each side that closes. The water fills up and then you go into the other side or the water goes down to go vice versa. Well, we were locking back to head back to the ramp today because we were going to weigh in and we tied up to these guys from UGA, really cool dudes, we were talking to them. And um, so the water started to raise. So is it gonna raise about, rise, raise, raise, rise about 15 foot, um, so as the water's coming up, the gate's closed, the water's coming up, they're tied to this hydraulic, I honestly don't even know what to call it, guys. I've never locked before until I came here. Um, but what happens is you tie this little thing and it goes up with the water. Well, there's a big old wall, and in the wall there's these little cubby holes. I don't know what they're for, but there's these little cubby holes, but um, I'd say it's about you know four foot wide, and it's about three foot deep. Well, those cubby holes don't move. It's just part of the wall. It's part of um, the lock. Well, these guys, they had their boat tied up to this thing, and we were tied to them. And with all the current in there, it started to shift their boat, so their boat kind of started pointing towards the wall as the water's coming up. Well, in that cubby hole, the front of their boat actually pointed into the cubby hole, but it actually went in it. Like they, we were talking to them, they weren't paying attention. We weren't paying attention. Like I, we were just like doing our thing. Well, one of the, they noticed it. They're like, hey, push, push the boat off. Well, what was happening was when this water goes up, guys, it goes up by the foot. I mean, the gallons of water is getting poured in. So it's like coming up. Well, it like came up in a heart, I mean, like a heartbeat. You're talking two to three seconds. It shot up. When it shot up, the guy's boat, because the point of it was in that cubby hole. And we're, the water's filling up. That cubby hole don't move. It's just a, it's a rock wall. And he's already tied to this thing. When it shot up, his boat got stuck in the cubby hole. And it went, Phew! and so it's already like this. His motor's almost out of the water. His whole front of his boat's locked into this cubby hole. And at that point in time, I literally thought that these guys were... I, I hate to say it, I really thought these guys were gonna sink their boat 100%. Or, you know, even worse, they could end up sinking their boat and they could fall into, you know, the lock and they could get sucked under water. Like, this could have led to some tragic things. So, like, this is very serious. Like, this is, it, and it happened so quick. It happened within a matter of seconds. Well, what happened was the water came up, the whole half of the boat flooded right away. Whole back of the boat, the prop was barely in the water, like, I would say halfway. And the guy by the driver, she was like not knowing what to do. And like instantly, like I thought, you know, crank up the motor and throw that thing in reverse and floor it as hard as you can. Cause I mean, you're going by seconds here. Like this is like literally two seconds later, like their boat probably would have been sunk. And I'm not kidding. I'm not over exaggerating this. Like I saw this, if I had this on GoPro, it would have been insane because I was literally two foot away from them. I was actually tied up to their boat. So he throws it in reverse, ramps that thing. It shoots out from under it and the boat just floats back up and all this water just pours inside, rips the trolling motor like, I mean, cracks it. Like when the water went up and he got stuck in that and it shifted the boat like this, all you hear is like you could hear the trolling motor literally cracking or it was the front of his boat. I don't know what it was, but it all cracked. Well, when that happened, when he shot out, like you're supposed to be tied when the, lot, when the water's filling up because all this current and all this water moving. So literally, I told Sean to throw the rope. So Sean threw the rope back in their boat and I had to back up and I was just kind of like moving around in the lock while all these guys are all tied up. You know, I was moving around in the lock kind of freely while this current's pushing me around because, because of that whole situation, which was scary. Like that was probably, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the top five scariest things that I've ever seen happen with my own two eyes like in front of me, probably top three. Like, I, I literally thought that, I, I don't like to say it, but I literally thought they could have, I mean, they could have died. Like, it, it was scary. And um, I talked to a few of my buddies that were actually there in the lock, like, when it happened. They saw it from a distance, 
and like they they were saying like my hair is standing up on my back like it was just crazy like i can't visually explain it unless you see it and then unless you really know what locking in and going into a lock actually is um but geez guys i'm telling you they, they were literally probably about two seconds away from sinking their boat and if they sank their boat you know they could have you know, felt obviously fell in the water and it could have sucked them underneath because, you know, the whole thing with it flooding up in the water and all the current. I mean, there could have been a lot of bad things that could have happened. Um, I really wasn't even concerned about the boat. I was concerned about them. Um, I was literally getting to the point where I was about to tell them to hop on my boat because I was like, screw the boat. Like, who cares about the boat at this point? Like, you guys are about to drown. Like, this boat is going to go down. And I really thought it was going to happen, but it was just a matter of milliseconds that saved it. And somehow they got the boat out of there. Yeah, it destroyed it a little bit, but Jesus, guys, that, that was the highlight of the day. That was insane. And I totally wish I had that thing on GoPro. If I had that on GoPro, you guys would probably be biting, like, your teeth. Like, oh, I can't. I Trust me, guys, I can't explain it. It's just a weird, crazy feeling. But that was pretty much day one, guys. So... We're sitting pretty solid right now. We need a good bag tomorrow to make top 10. I mean, we really need a good bag. Um, overall, I would love to make a top 20, but I really want to make a top 10. Heck, I really want to win this thing. And for us to win it, we're going to have to bust two big old 15-pound bags. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but we're going to go out there. We're going to try our best. I'm going to keep you guys updated. If you guys haven't followed me on Instagram, go follow me at Kicking Their Bass TV, where I post updates, update pictures. I actually have the picture on there right now. I post stories all day long. And um, it's just pretty much YouTube or story of my life on the updates, you know, all day long. So be sure to go give me a follow. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys enjoyed this little update video, be sure to like the video. Be sure to comment below on what you guys wanna see next. Be sure to comment below if you guys wanna see a day two update video on some of the highlights of the day and um, me talking about how the day went. And also um, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love you guys so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next video on Friday. Mind your motherfucking business, ain't nothing you gotta see How you all up in my shit when you got more problems than me? Yeah, I'm cool, but you don't wanna see that other side of me And my mobbing deep hoe, I'm a prodigy I know, I know that you've been envy, it ain't that hard to see Don't you dare go fix your mouth to tell me that you proud of me ain't